made, haven't had any yet, so the, the rush was to get off the dock. Yeah, we didn't want to wake everyone up, but, and we were staying up late last night for the meteor shower, which was awesome. Someone doesn't have enough attention to watch them, but, um, yeah, some of us saw a lot of meteors. I saw a few. There's a couple satellites. Yeah. So, so here we go. All right. Harbor. So hopefully when we get up there are still spaces on the dock. So we're about three and a half hours in now. It's a long ride up here but the scenery is spectacular. Um, you just missed Mike doing chores. He vacuumed upstairs, so we have a nice clean spot. What do you guys think? Uh, it's, it's amazing. The, uh, the hills on either side are super cool. The water is very flat. Um, and we're not having too much current right now. We were having some way back there, but we're making good speed should be there in about two hours. It's pretty nice. Pretty nice. The run to Princess Louisa Inlet is a serious commitment of over 40 miles with no great options to dock or anchor along the way. And since Malibu Rapids that lead into the inlet can only be safely transited at slack water for most boats, your time calculations, including currents, need to be spot on. The standard way to time slack water is to use the tide tables for Point Atkinson. Add 35 minutes to the low water times and add 25 minutes to the high water time. Also note that the tide tables are printed in standard time, so you'll have to add one hour for daylight savings time. Nobody said it was going to be easy. Part of being captain is to do an engine room check on a regular basis. I can't say that I do it at a set time like many people do, which I think is a great idea. But if I have a moment, I always try to go down and take a look at the engines. And what you're looking for is you're looking for any water, any smoke, any steam, any strange smells or sounds. There's really no substitute for being able to get down into the engine room and see what's going on and hopefully find something before it becomes a problem. And to be honest, I do get a great bit of satisfaction when I do walk down there and everything's in order. Malibu Rapids. 
very exciting. We have seen a couple, maybe four boats come out. So we're hoping that there is dock space when we get in. As mentioned before, Malibu Rapids it can only really be safely transited at slack water. There's been stories of even 50 foot boats being spun in circles in the whirlpools and the current through there can run up to 10 knots. So you want to be able to take a good look at it before you enter. And also you want to get on channel 16 and declare your intentions because it is very narrow and you're going to have boats coming out and also coming in at the same time because it's such a small window of time. When we entered, the current was still coming out a little bit at about three knots. We felt that we had enough power that if we got into any type of situation, we'd be able to power through it. If you have a full displacement trawler, those types of numbers might have to come into play. At the head of Malibu Rapids is a Malibu Club. Built in 1940 by Thomas Hamilton and named after his yacht, the Malibu. Over the years, it was open. It hosted the rich and famous until it closed in 1950. And in 1953, Young Life bought the resort and turned it into a Christian camp for high school age kids and which it still is today. There's a dinghy dock just on the inside of the rapids where you can go ashore, get tours, and they sell ice cream. So we are in Princess Louisa Inlet in front of Chatterbox Falls and this is literally something that we have talked about doing for 30 years. Uh, like I, when I first started dating Mike he talked about um, and that was in the 90s not to date myself. <laughs> Early 90s. <laughs> Um, yeah, that was like, this has been a dream for a long time. I had a picture of a Fleming in front of Chatterbox Falls, and we're not here on a Fleming. Um, <laughs> we spent that money raising a child instead. <laughs> <laughs> but it's amazing to be here. It is amazing to be here with my family and to get to have done this. And uh, here's a look at where we're at. Smile for the camera, boys. <laughs> oh, two boys. Okay. Flag. <laughs> <laughs> At the head of the public dock, there's a spot for seaplanes, and quite a few of them come in during the day. In fact, one of the people there said a few days before we got there, a plane pulled up and a whole wedding party walked out, went to the falls got the wedding done, took pictures, got back in the plane, and took off. Now that's getting married in style. It's 
starting at the public dock, there's a really nice trail that's well marked. Much of it has a boardwalk, there's some bridges over some of the creeks, and it leads right to Chatterbox Falls. It's maybe not even an eighth of a mile, but it's a really nice and well laid out trail. Here's a nice warning that will really get your attention. The sound from Chatterbox Falls can be heard from the docks very clearly. As you approach it by foot on the trail, it turns into a very impressive roar. definitely doesn't suck. It's still not getting old. This was really cool to see. This is the anchor for a boat anchored just offshore. And I'm sure when they dropped it, there was water there. Really says something about the 17 foot tidal difference. I guess one advantage is it makes it easy to check how well your anchor is set once the tide goes out.
Robbie took the dinghy down to the Donald Island to go check out that area further down the inlet. Besides the head of the inlet near Chatterbox Falls, McDonald Island is the one other place where you can anchor or grab a mooring ball. And there are also some nice hiking trails that start right there at McDonald Island. So I took the dinghy out on a little ride and I'm now on McDonald Island. Um, this is the edge of it. And currently I've been doing some jumps off here because it's a sheer drop down right next to the island. So I'll take you with you or take me with you on one. So I'm making my way down to Malibu Rapids and on either side of me there have been seals throwing around salmon and breaking them up to eat. This must be the good life for a seal to be in this beautiful region and have a full belly. It was pretty warm, I'd say about 80 degrees, and Robbie said to me, Dad, let's grab a few beers and go sit our feet in the water underneath the waterfall. I think I raised that boy right. Man, that felt really, really good. So we're uh, hanging out on the uh, swim step, transom, swim step, of the boat. This isn't bad. No complaints. No complaints. <laughs> Feet in the water because it's hot. But no more than that because um oh because we're afraid of the so the There's supposed to be lions, main jail jellyfish here, but then we've seen people swimming around. This is the view. I don't know. And, well, it's not the peak. We think the meteor shower is still going on and it literally should be coming right across uh, this opening here. So tonight we're going to sit back here and watch some more shooting stars. And possibly have a cocktail. We had a couple of great days here at Princess Louisa Inlet. Um, I like to call it the Yosemite, of, uh, the Yosemite with boats just beautiful up here yeah it's hard to describe even and i don't think the videos and the pictures are gonna do it justice my favorite part i think was last night 
um, the boys were playing on the swim platform, playing guitar, and people from the other boats came out and put out chairs and listened. And you, you were looking up at the stars and we're still seeing the remnants of the meteor shower. And then they kicked their feet in the water and the bioluminescence lit up. And none of this is stuff we can capture on the video. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, but, but it was, it was amazing spectacular yeah it was really really cool yeah, yeah. so we're going to be taking off in a little bit and uh heading back out uh you can only get in through the, the rapids a couple times a day unless you really <laughs> want to have a fun ride yeah unless you're brave <laughs> so uh we would like to have left a little bit earlier because we had a long run to go but uh looks like at 12 20 is the slack water is so it'll be a uh, it'll be a long day a to long day on the boat plan. yeah it could be yeah it could be, it could be worse, <laughs> it could be worse. <laughs> so off we go and we'll see where we end up plan is smuggler's cove but uh we, we may call an audible <laughs> we may call an audible <laughs> exactly all right away we go all right cool Join us in our next episode when we take advantage of a small weather window and cross the Strait of Georgia over to the Vancouver Island side at Nanaimo and then south into the Gulf Islands. If you are enjoying our videos, please like and subscribe.